Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is a section where we just take some questions and answers. So as we did the live stream, we got a number of questions in through the chat. We weren't able to address them uh, as we're going on. So we have them here now. So we've got a bit of a panel with us. We've got Drew and Mike Howe from uh, Glueware with us. Let's go straight into the questions, first of all. Uh, we've got a question in regarding the discovery of the devices. Uh, Frank asks, is my experience, this has always been a weak link. How does Glueware handle dealing with, say, practical issues like large cam tables, such as found in large layer two switch environments or massive SNMP walks? Have you got protections in place for those types of things? Yeah, that's, that's a good one to address in that, you know, when, when you're discovering a network, a lot of products in the past required SNMP. And SNMP puts a tax or a toll on the device when you're walking the MIB structure, right? So we made a decision pretty early on that, you know, Glueware not being monitoring, we're automation, we're going to emulate the user. And so our discovery executes commands on the command line and then ingests the output and wraps it in data modeling. So what we found is the efficiency and the, the toll on the device is much lower. It's not as high of a tax. And we're able to we're able to uh, extract out the exact information that we need and continue to expand it. So what what we've determined is numerous things are pre-built in the discovery mm -hmm. and then the customers can expand it. So when it comes to specific states like routing tables or cam tables, or these things can be very large and also can be mm -hmm. taxing when you query them and it all depends on the series of device that you're running the commands on. So we put that more in the customer's hands of building in or layering in their own state assessments or layer, layering in their own commands. So ultimately it's customizable and you do have to understand an impact and kind of tune and tweak it to adjust. So you're making sure you're not, you're creating a degraded situation on your network. Mike, we've got another question. Want to know if Glueware uses vendor APIs, NetConf, ResConf, et cetera, when retrieving configuration or making changes, or are you sticking with SSH and CLI? Yeah, that's, that's a good one as well in that, you know, it, it seemed like the industry was moving in that direction, NetConf, RESTConf, and Yang-based data modeling. And, and ultimately, when, you know, one of the kind of innovative startups got acquired and went to a big company, the, the, it kind of lost a lot of momentum. And when you think about the Yang-based data modeling, the standard-based Yang models are like just dra being dragged through the IETF. And so we were watching that with a lot of interest and intent because when you can leverage something that already has a data model, it's great, right? So what's happened is numerous vendors or three or four of the leading vendors, mostly on their carrier grade products, support uh, NetConf and Yang based data models. And to be honest, it's it's been a situation where it's all, it's primarily on carrier grade. And when you look at the 30 plus vendors we support across enterprises, the majority of it, 90 5% doesn't support NetConf Yang. So while we are interested in it and would onboard it and have the capability of onboarding it because our, our platform could ingest and, and use those mechanisms, it ultimately hasn't been a priority is where, what it's come down to. So we kind of continue to look at it and reassess it. But at this point, we're not NetConf Yang, we're CLI, but think, we, yeah. I think it's important to remember that uh, SNMP took over 15 years to arrive. So expecting NetConf to arrive in less than a decade might be incredibly optimistic. Is that, as a vendor side, that would be not unreasonable if you remember yeah. that SNP. And if you look at it, most of the vendors who are doing uh, NetConf Yang also have a controller strategy. Yeah. And so what we found is we, ha we have been onboarding and enabling API communication to a controller, which then in turn talks to those devices. So you know, it's not that you, you don't yeah. want to do NetConf. It's just that for most enterprise networks, NetConf is not actually enabled yet. True. And what we've seen too is everything we need out of those those devices that support NetConf also support CLI. And mm -hmm. so we have broad support for those those platforms and, and don't really have any any restrictions. In fact, sometimes CLI is even more rich than a wrapper and what they're exposing <laughs> in the NetConf. Depends Net on whether games. the API sits on top of the CLI or the CLI sits on top of the API. Yeah, exactly. And that there are questions like that. Next question is, can Glueware operate in a dark site, i.e. not connected to the inside internet? If yes, how is the Glueware VM updated? Yes, absolutely. You know, we install through VM, so we, we provide the OVA and you install it. Then when you are due, when you need to update uh, the packages. Glueware is a modular system that has all kinds of packages that can be updated depending on, you know, what Glueware is releasing or if, you know, you need a custom package. So those are handled through capsules that are just delivered 
as offline files, and that file is moved onto the system. You can call it sneaker net or whatever you want, but you, you do have a mechanism to move the capsules onto so the you file. So you can work in air gapped environments. Absolutely. It's not a problem. Okay. Absolutely. This is a support question. Do you have Palo Alto and Gigamon support? And if not, are they on your roadmap? Yeah, good one and across the vendors. And you can you can hit glueware.com and go to supported vendors. We're around 30 operating systems and growing. Uh, we do have Palo Alto Panos operating systems, so we do have that. We have not boarded Gigamon yet. Gigamon's in that packet broker business, so they're not really a, a network um, uh, communication product, more like uh, monitoring on that side. Um, it's a very interesting area. We've looked at products like Ixia and Gigamon. We absolutely could onboard them. It's just a priority decision. So it takes but us I around. Could, I could write something myself. So maybe I don't need, I, I could still develop an extension to that and do something myself to bring that on if I needed to. For vendor adapters that are CLI based, Glueware writes it. If it is mm -hmm. an API interface, the customer could write it themselves within Glueware okay. Lab. Yeah. But, so, you know, we, we onboard vendors adapters in like roughly a two week time period. We're very quick to add vendors. Okay. So talk to your sales rep and uh, give him a reason to include it, basically, is what I'm hearing there. Exactly. Uh, and the final question is, uh, how does Glueware integrate with monitoring systems to let engineers know if Glueware is experiencing problems, if it's broken or something's experiencing a failure? Yeah, and the primary way is um, through API integration. So if we have a published API, and we also can create custom API calls and, and interfaces. So that would be the primary way, but a, a way we're now layering into the product and adding in is, We've added a syslog module, so we're able to catch syslog in our current release and indicate things like, you know, uh, someone has went into config mode on a router, so we can trigger drift. And our next major release coming up in just two or three mo two months, uh, roughly, we're going to be able to send the syslog messages. So this is where, in, in for some, you know, requirements around compliance, they want the network systems to be able to send syslog. And so that okay, way, yeah. that, that way we can integrate. have to go on to a, a system of record or something like that, yeah. if that's the way you're looking at. And a, and a subsidiary question or a supplemental question just came in. Can you connect to GitLab as a source of truth or does it have to be all glue? Yeah, and that's been a great one as well. Uh, we have developed integration with GitHub or, and or get uh, an external repository. It's in currently in beta. Um, we have some customers, you know, very interested in kind of synchronizing source of truth of the, like the config snippets outside mm -hmm. of Glueware. So we've built it. It's not yet productized, but we are looking forward to releasing that as soon as we can. All right. With that, I'm going to wrap up the live stream event for today. Thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks particularly Chris DiPaolo, Terry Slattery and Angelo Rossi for coming on to talk about theirs from a user experience and also to Glueware for sponsoring the event. On behalf of Packet Pushes, thanks so much for listening. And if you want to find out more about everything, please contact Glueware at glueware.com slash packet pushes slash, let me say that again, at glueware.com packet dash pushes dash live stream. There's a webpage there with more information where you can get more. But of course, you can either contact us or reach out to Glueware at Glueware.com. That's G-L-U-W-A-R-E. They'd be more than delighted to stick a sales rep onto you who's going to be able to help you with all the questions that you need. Thanks very much for watching this, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the podcast next week. And as always, remember that too much technology would never be enough. <laughs>